so you're sitting there thinking, <clears throat> you know, I can't add any clients. I, I just can't do it. I can't work with anybody, can't bring on any new business. I just don't have capacity. There's My staff can't do it, right? Can't onboard anybody. I'm overwhelmed. One of the biggest problems people have when they start really growing, and sometimes you do it by mistake, sometimes you do it word of mouth and referrals, is that you, you start thinking that you can't take on new business. Instead of asking the question, and this is a key question, you know, what would it look like to be able to continue to grow the business and alleviate the pressure on service delivery and increase profit margin? And there's this process that our team came up with probably about a year ago now, and it has completely changed the game for people. I see people so many times that, you know, have grown their business that just, I can't add any new clients. I can't add any new clients. But at the same time, they're not really making the kind of money that they want to on the business. They have low profit margin. We typically, when we think about profit margin, we think about the owner's salary plus net profit. And so a lot of times people say, well, I can't add new people to the business. And I'm going to pull something up here to show you guys. I can't add new people to the business. And you know, until I hire new people or until I get a better process. So you're at capacity, right? You're at full capacity. Well, then look at your profitability. Where is your profitability? If you're at 250,000 in sales, your profitability should be 60, 70% in terms of salary and net profit. Could be even higher than that. If you're at a million in sales, you, you should be at 50% between your salary and net profit. So if you're not at those levels, right, in terms of your take home on the business, but you can't grow, you feel like you can't add new people, the question is why? And the reason oftentimes is that the clients that you brought in, the way you negotiated the pricing and the packaging, it just doesn't work to go to another level. A lot of times when you're, when you're first getting started, you go out, you add all these clients, right? But you're not really factoring in your own payroll cost. And so then when you start to realize, gosh, I've got to hire people and I've got to have payroll cost after you know the sales of this client. And then I've got to have enough profit in there for me to be able to pay myself and all the overhead. Because when you're first getting started, you like, just kind of muscle it through. You work nights, you work weekends, you work all this extra time. You don't really price the engagement to have revenue, you know, labor, direct labor cost, operating expenses, and profit. And so you kind of have to go through this process. We call it the rinse, where you actually continue to grow the business, continue to add clients every new month, every single month, but you don't really like, you never stop adding new clients. And you don't stop working on the back end processes, but you don't tell yourself, oh, if I just fix some little process or something, I'll do it. When we do this as well, you not only grow, you increase profitability at the same time. Now, this seems simple. This seems simple, but you know, when, when you see this, this is going to be a simple little piece and you say, oh, that's simple. Everybody knows that. But what you have to understand is that common knowledge is not common practice. And while this is a simple process and this is logical, it is intuitive, when I tell it to you, you might think, well, oh yeah, obviously that makes sense. But the question is, well, why is it in your plan? Why is it not in your plan? Why are you telling yourself you can't grow when when you see this, you'd be like, oh, well, obviously I could do that. That makes sense. So here, I'm going to show you a quick example here. So we call it the rinse. Now, let's say you come across your business. And I'm going to show you this. Let's say you have two clients that are paying $300 a month, right? So they're paying 300 bucks a month. Then you get a new client, right? That new client's paying 1500 bucks a month. Okay, great. That's awesome. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go back and renegotiate those two clients that are at 300 bucks a month. And you're going to say, hey, look, we loved working with you. I mean, honestly, we've crushed it together. But the problem is at this point, I mean, we've really realized that when we look back that we've been losing money on this account since we started we'd love to keep working with you honestly we think we could work with you for years decades even but we're gonna have to do this a little bit differently and our new minimum pricing is you could say 500 you could say 750 so we go back and renegotiate those people now let's say they all stay right so you have one person at 1500 the new person you added one at 750 one at 750 that's three total clients at a total of three thousand a month recurring so you've gone from you know the two clients at 600 to the three clients at three thousand now that generally doesn't happen, right? Because just because you want to increase prices on somebody, this isn't the land of the make-believe. Most of the time, not everybody stays. So let's take a look here. Let's say they both leave. They both say, hey, Andrew, you cray-cray, right? I'm out of here, right? I got to leave. They leave, right? So then you went from two clients at 600 bucks a month to one client at 1500 And if you negotiated the scope on that 1500 a month client the right way, you're in a better situation. Just getting somebody to pay a higher price doesn't mean it's a better client, doesn't mean there's better margin. You have to have the right price and the right package and scope. Okay, so assuming you nailed the scope on that, you got that one client at 1,500 and then you go back, both those people leave. Okay, so you're in a better position because you're managing one client for $1,500 of monthly recurring revenue versus two clients for 300. 
Now, what we typically see happen, okay, is that one person stays and one person goes. So when you look at this, okay, when you see this, you're gonna see one person stays, one person goes, in which case we're gonna have two clients at 2250 a month. Now, it doesn't really matter what happens because if any of these situations, any of these situations, okay, if both clients leave, you're better off. If one client stays, you're better off. If uh, both clients stay, you're better off. So you kind of have three ways to win. The only way you lose is if you add that client at 1500 and then you renegotiate these, they both leave and then that client leaves, which it is possible, right? It's not outside the realm of possibility, but it is highly unlikely. Now, when you do this, you basically go through the process of increasing revenue. And I'll even show you this. I write this out on this slide here too. I just gave this presentation. You go through the process of increasing revenue. At the same time, you increase profit margin. Keep the same team without hiring. Work with the same number of clients and reduce the amount of time that you and your team put in, okay? When you do that, you grow the business and you grow the profit margin of the business. I learned this in the year of, the first time I learned this was in the year of 2018, where I was able to grow our company and massively grow bottom line at the same time by going through this rinsing process. And so I first kind of figured that out. And it sounds, you know, easy and it sounds simple, but the reality of it is it is simple, but it's not easy. It, you know, it is not easy to have these conversations. It takes a lot of courage. It takes knowing what to say. It takes getting that new client to be able to go back through and do the rinse. And we have a very similar process on the tax side. Now, the tax side, it's a little bit different, right? Because you got tax season, tax season price increases, you got tax planning. That's an example on the monthly recurring accounting side. Uh, but we do the same thing on the tax side as well. And so if you're interested in seeing the tax rents, I put a link below for you to go ahead and sign up for, actually apply for our coaching program over the course of 12 months. The rents is one of the things that we do. Because when somebody comes in and they say, Andrew, I can't, I can't add any new business. I start talking about the rents and I'm like, of course you can add new business. In fact, you have to add new business because how are you gonna get these clients to pay more? You have to renegotiate. How are you gonna feel confident renegotiating unless you can walk away? Because when you add a client at 1500, if they don't go forward, you walk away. You say, hey, this isn't gonna work, right? And you're still better off. So you, you can't stop growing the business. You can't stop getting new business. But at the same time, you have to rinse. You have to go back and do the renegotiations. Otherwise, it will pile up. And if you keep working with people and paying 175 a month, like I know you got one. I know you got one, that 175 a month there. I mean, I know, I know, I know what you're saying, right? Well, Andrew, it takes, like literally 30 minutes a month, literally 30 minutes of going there. It doesn't, it doesn't take you 30 minutes a month. It's a person, it's an entire QuickBooks account, it's an entire invoice, it's an entire engagement letter, it's an entire person that can ask questions throughout the year. Guys, you can't hardly answer your email for 175 bucks when you start thinking about yourself in a different way, okay? So I put a link below for you to go ahead and apply. We'll talk about the rents on the tax side. We'll talk about the rents on the accounting side. I'll go through some case studies and examples of people that have done this. I'll show you actual P&L statements of people that have gone through and done it. You'll talk with me or somebody from my team. We do a 12-month program over the course of a year, grow the business, increase profitability. Um, you know, and like I always tell people, if you fill out that application below, you're gonna come on the other side. You'll go through a slide presentation with our team. It's about 300 slides where we'll talk about what we do and how we help. If at the end of that, you don't think you can make an ROI, you don't think you can make more than the investment of the program, then don't sign up, right? I'll tell you right now, I'm not, I'm not you don't need to do it, right? I, the last thing we wanna do is have somebody come in that doesn't think that they can take their business to another level with us because then you won't, right? If you don't believe it's possible, you don't even try. And if you don't believe it's possible with us, the whole process will get sabotaged. So go through, fill out the application and make the decision for yourself. Do you think you have a better chance of doing more in gross cash sales, net cash profit on your business this year if you come in and you work with us and we work on some of these things or if you keep doing what you're doing? And if it's keep doing what you're doing, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you want the help, you think we'll do it faster, we'll go bigger, I'd love to work with you. Uh, put a link to the application below and I will see you on the other side.